Well, in this video, I want to try to make sense of the epsilon delta definition of limit. Try to make it as easy as I can. I mean, the the foundation of calculus is based on limits, so we do like to have some formal definitions of limits so we can feel like the calculus is built on a rock-solid foundation. Anyway, here's a, my version of the definition. Epsilon delta definition of limit. If you got some function f defined on some open interval containing some number a, doesn't have to be defined at a. And if l is a real number, the limit is x approaches a of f of x will equal l. If you can always do this, you can for any positive number epsilon, you can find a number delta such that if x is in this interval from a minus delta to a plus delta, but leaving our a, then the function value will be in the interval from l minus epsilon to l plus epsilon. Now let's try a picture of that. I've got here a, a picture for a special case I'm going to look at in just a minute, but I also overlaid it with uh, some labeling to correspond to the definition we just looked at. So the definition says if y is some function of x, picture in red, and defined over some interval from say uh, a minus delta to a plus delta, containing a, of the function doesn't have to be defined at a, then the uh, limit is x approaches a of f of x, if it equals some number l, then what has to be true is you can pick this number epsilon and make it as close to zero as you like, so that an interval on the y-axis from l minus epsilon to l plus epsilon could be really small around l, it could literally just go from down here to up there. But what will have to be true if the limit is L is that you can find the delta in which you look at the interval from A minus delta to A plus delta. I picture you going from there to there. And what has to be true if this limit definition is satisfied is I can pick any value for X in this interval here except for the A value, 2 in this picture. So I can pick a value over here for x, and from there go straight up to the graph of the function, then straight over to the y-axis, you land on the f of x value for that value of x. And that f of x value, that function value, will always be between your l minus epsilon and l plus epsilon. And that you can do this no matter how close to zero you make epsilon. So that could be a tiny little interval there. And you can find a small enough interval around here. Check that every value for x in this interval is your function value in that interval. And in, in this particular case, I was actually picturing f of x equals x squared and the limit is x approach 2 which for this function, you could get that limit by what's called direct substitution. Just put your 2 in there for x, square it, you get 4. In fact, that is the limit as x approaches 2 of, of x squared. It, it's 4. But to try to make sense of that epsilon delta definition of limit, I do that, that picture. Here's the picture again without the more general labeling. And so limit x approaches to f of x equals 4. f of x is picture in red here. It's just defined at 2, so I didn't need to put a hollow dot there. Um, but uh, what I did was I said, well, if I got a, you know, a limit of 4, an epsilon value in this picture of 2, so I went from 4 minus 2 to 4 plus 2 is my L minus epsilon to L plus epsilon. Uh, clearly, in this picture, I can go over here and find an interval around 2. It doesn't have to go all the way from here out to here, and then from here come back probably about to there. Uh, it could be smaller. 
just that I can find an interval around 2 such that every value for x in this interval gives you a function value in that interval. And I can do it no matter how small this interval here is. This epsilon number can be very close to zero. Uh, you know, for example, here I, I cue, my, cue this into a, an MP4 uh, little video within a video. And if I click right here, we can animate this, and what you'll observe is no matter how small this interval around 4 got on the y-axis, there was still an interval around 2. It actually went from here back to not quite all the way back to what's there in the picture. Um, such that every value for x in this interval gives you a function value in that interval. And keep in mind, again, for, for any interval around your limiting value of 4, any L minus epsilon to L plus epsilon, in this case 4 minus epsilon to 4 plus epsilon. All you need is one interval small enough over here. So it didn't have to be as big as what's picture. It could, could have been smaller. For sure, still every value for x in that interval, we have a function value in this interval. Well, it has to be true if uh, the epsilon delta definition is to be satisfied. I can click in the slider and we can see some, you know, successfully smaller discrete intervals where once again you can visually see that epsilon delta definition is going to be satisfied. Now, don't want to overlook uh, stressing that the function doesn't have to be defined at the value you're limiting on. So like this function here is equivalent to the x squared function, which I'm now calling g of x, except this function f of x is not defined at 2. I can factor x squared out of the numerator, and notice we got this common factor of x minus 2, so that uh, the limit as x approaches 2 uh, here, even though it's not defined when you put in 2 for x, will equal the limit as x approaches 2 of this function here. Because f and g agree at every place but x equal to 2, and we do have a theorem in calculus telling us we have two functions that are identical at all but some discrete value for x. The limits, if they exist at that value for x, will be the same. So the limit is x approaches 2 of f of x, which is going to equal the limit as x approaches 2 of what I call g of x and b4. And pictures supporting the claim of the limit and the epsilon delta definition is about the same, except now we got a point missing, a little hole in the graph for the, uh, this f function here. It means we're not, not going to evaluate it down here at 2, but we can still, you know, for any, uh, any epsilon neighborhood of the limit value of 4, 4 minus epsilon to 4 plus epsilon, starting out with the epsilon value of 2 again in this picture, there's going to be a corresponding interval from like 2 minus delta to 2 plus delta, and that delta could be mighty small if you want it, or this is about, about as large as it could be, it would be from here to here in this picture. Uh, but uh, every value for x in this interval is going to give a function value in that interval. And since you're not evaluating at, at zero and don't have to in the definition, uh, no problem. And uh, you know, I can, can animate this, and we can see once again that uh, uh, no matter how small this interval is, you can find one over here that will do the trick, so to speak. You can discreetly look at uh, successively smaller uh, intervals around 4 and see an interval around 2 that's going to uh, can be used to satisfy your definition of, of limit, no matter what. So it's always just play, 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 play. It doesn't matter how small you make that interval around 4, you can make an interval around 2 that will uh, do the trick. Really a pretty cool definition. Nice thing to, you know, base future limits on. I like it. Stay safe.